fabulous people. Welcome to Brussels, Belgium. Yes, it is freezing, but this city has so much to offer. And today I'm going to share with you everything there is to know about visiting Brussels. What to do in Brussels, what to see in Brussels, and of course, what to eat in Brussels. Now, before we begin, you know the drill. Please remember to smack that like button. And if you're new to my channel and my vibe and the vibe of this channel resonates with you, please consider subscribing. All right, fabulous people, let's go explore Brussels. Let's begin this Brussels vlog and our exploration of the city with the Grand Place the central square of the city of Brussels that you absolutely cannot miss. Considered one of the most beautiful squares in the world, this architectural jewel made up of numerous impressive guild houses is destined to leave you speechless. From day to night, this is undoubtedly one of the most popular tourist attractions in Brussels. The main attraction of Grand Place is Brussels Town Hall, a true masterpiece of Gothic architecture. Constructed during the 15th century, this structure is no stranger to numerous legends, stories, and anecdotes. If you look closely, you would immediately notice that the high tower is not positioned in the center of the building. Legend has it that when the architect realized the mistake, he climbed to the top and jumped to his death. One of the things that truly impresses me about Brussels is that on every single corner there is something to be captured or discovered or enjoyed. Guys, this city is truly magical. The next step on our journey is a symbol of Brussels, which is, you've guessed it, the mannequin piss. Designed in 1388, it originally served as the means by which many people in Brussels received water. One of the fun facts about the statue is that it regularly gets dressed in different outfits and even has a published schedule posted on the railings of the fountain by a non-profit organization, the Friends of Mannequin Piss. If you want to see the list of all the different outfits this important landmark of Brussels was dressed in, then head over across the street to one of the most popular taverns in Brussels, which name I will not even attempt to pronounce. Famous among locals and tourists for its wide selection of beers, eclectic wall art and peculiar hanging puppets, this tavern is a perfect place to enjoy delicious Belgian beer and to take a break from all the sightseeing in Brussels. All right, fabulous people, now let me share with you some travel tips for Brussels. Number one, if you visit Brussels during the spring, especially the first part of spring, be prepared to experience all four seasons in one day or maybe even an hour. It might start like a beautiful sunny day and then within a few minutes it's going to start raining, then potentially hailing, then the wind will pick up and then out of sudden the sun will come out like nothing happened. Number two, most of the sites in Brussels you will be able to admire only from the outside you will not be able to go in. For example, the town hall is open to the public only during certain times of the week. The Royal Palace of Brussels opens to the public normally from the 21st of July and stays open until the early September. Number three, chocolate in Brussels. It's like coffee in Italy. It's just impossible to find a bad one. It's a true paradise for chocolate lovers. But of course, there are some chocolate houses with strong, prominent, long history. And today I'm going to introduce you to some of my favorites. As you enter saint Hubert Royal Galleries, you cannot help but to notice its beauty and elegance. Designed in 1847 and measuring approximately 656 feet, this is the first glazed shop and arcade in the entire Europe. Here you can find restaurants and bars, exclusive boutiques with jewelry, and important chocolate stores, where you and I are heading next. 
our first chocolate house stop is Pierre Marcolini, established in Brussels in 1995 by Pierre Marcolini, the chocolatier, the pioneer of the bean-to-bar movement and the ambassador of sustainable chocolate. He truly mastered the process of making chocolate from the bean, and the result is a plethora of unforgettable flavors and intense emotions. In the store, you will be offered different chocolate tastings, and let me warn you in advance, making a final choice will not be easy. And now, welcome to Neuhaus, the inventor of the Belgian praline. The family opened its original Neuhaus boutique in Brussels in 1857, and this shop continues to thrive today, delighting its customers with world-famous classics as well as new combinations of flavors in modern shapes. Needless to say, it was very difficult to leave the store without trying every single piece of chocolate inside, but definitely made sure to get tons of options for friends and family back home. Don't worry, mom. I got you tons of chocolate options. Before we continue on our journey, there is one important piece of information that I absolutely have to share with you. All right, fabulous people, you know me and always sharing with you some of the tourist traps to avoid no matter where I go. And this street, even though it is absolutely stunning, unfortunately, locals told me, has a lot of tourist traps. So if you don't want to run into a chance of having a bad meal in Brussels, then I recommend to avoid this street altogether. On my way to the Belgium Royal Museums of Fine Arts, I couldn't help but to admire the Mont des Arts garden, a green transition between the upper and lower parts of the city and, in my opinion, a place with some of the best views of Brussels. If you are a fan of art, then Royal Museums of Fine Arts of Belgium, with over 20,000 paintings, drawings and sculptures, should definitely be on your list when visiting Brussels. Fabulous people, this is one of the sites in Brussels that I really wanted to show you, to see it with my own eyes. I'm so excited to be here. Let's go explore it together. The Royal Museums of Fine Arts in Belgium are an association of six art centers, which are considered the best in Belgium. Opened in 1799, the Museum of Ancient Art makes up the largest part and features works of arts from the 15th to the 18th centuries. This museum is particularly famous for its remarkable collection of Flemish paintings, as well as hundreds of works of art by Van Dyck and Rubens. Guys, this museum is incredible. Honestly, I'm getting emotional. All this beauty, this art, I'm just getting a little bit moved by all of this and I just wanted to give you of course some practical information so the ticket is 15 euros and as you can tell you pretty much get this entire place to yourself you have this comfortable seats pretty much on every corner where you can really just stop sit down admire the beauty or just rest you also have lockers downstairs where you can leave your stuff just in case you're carrying a backpack or anything heavy with yourself as a matter of fact they do make you leave all your stuff downstairs so this is one thing to definitely keep in mind adjacent to the main building is the magritte museum which in my opinion you should definitely visit and explore it features the largest collection of one of the best belgian artists from the 20th century the collection is made up of 250 works of art and features some of his best-known works, such as the Empire of Light and the Domain of Arnheim. The Magritte Museum has become one of the most visited museums in Brussels, and if you are an art fan or just simply curious to see Magritte's work, this museum is an absolute must. After the museum, I headed straight to one of the coolest spots for lunch, Nordzi talking about some of the best and freshest food in Brussels. Here daily, you'll find tons of fresh fish and seafood options. Once your order is ready, they will bring it straight to your table and then it's time to feast. Guys, honestly, this is such a cool concept because 
you get to choose from many different fresh fish options and then they cook it right for you here and then you get to enjoy the freshest seafood with some white wine or beer hang out with friends enjoy the views of course during the weekend this place gets very crowded very busy but the food is the freshest and the ambiance is the most perfect this is what brussels is all about once you're done with lunch you can certainly stop by and explore saint catherine's church Twice the church has been threatened with demolition and in 2014 it was finally placed under the responsibility of the priests of the Brotherhood of Holy Apostles. On my way to the Palace of Justice, I was drawn to the flower garden of Square du Petit Sablon. This true architectural gem is located right in front of the church of our Blessed Lady of the Sablon and gives you a sense of serenity in the middle of a busy city. My only wish is to see it during the spring or summertime with all the trees and flowers in full bloom. And now let me introduce you to the Palace of Justice, one of the largest and most impressive buildings in the whole of Europe. Constructed between 1866 and 1883, to this day it remains the most important court building in Belgium. And yes, the exterior of the building might be a bit questionable, but the interior, with its 328 feet tall open foyer, is truly a must-see in Brussels. Now, I know what you're thinking. What about the street food in Brussels, Anastasia? I got you, fabulous. Let me take you to a place that sells some of the best frites or Belgian fries in the city. So, let's hop on the bus and head to Maison Antoine. Located in Place Jourdan, this place has a reputation for the best fries in Brussels and therefore it's always busy. Traditionally, they are topped with mayonnaise, but you can also choose among numerous sauce options and you can also ask for it to be served on the side. I obviously wanted to blend it with locals. To walk off some of that food coma, I recommend heading over to a nearby Sonkotnek Park to admire a triumphal arch with a bronze chariot in the center. The palace and the arch were built to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the independent state of Belgium. A truly impressive sight. Before we head to the next site, there is one dessert I absolutely have to introduce you to. And no, it's not waffles, even though they are really good and on pretty much every corner. Welcome to Merveilleux de Fred. Even before you walk in, you notice artisans in the windows of the refined Baroque decor store creating specialties for their customers. As you enter, you'll be met with warm smiles and the smell of freshly baked pastries. There are so many cakes and pastries to choose from, but I recommend Le Marvillot, a signature dessert with inimitable meringue that makes this cake so light and airy. Originally chocolate flavored, it's now available in many different flavors. I recommend getting a sample box because once you try it, you'll quickly realize that one wasn't enough. Since the Atomium is a bit outside of the city center, I decided to hop on a metro to get there. I found the metro and public transportation in Brussels in general to be clean and efficient. To my surprise, some of the metro stations even had mini markets and cafes inside. Once you exit the Atomio metro station, you'll walk for just a few minutes before you will stand right in front of the Atomium, an enormous 334 feet tall sculpture of an atom that became an image of the Belgian capital. This impressive site contains permanent and temporary exhibitions inside each sphere and a restaurant in the top one. As the evening time approached, I was excited to check out the nightlife in Brussels by going to one of the newest hotspots, Lily's Restaurant and Club. With an amazing selection of food and drinks, impeccable service and stylish ambiance, this place is 10 out of 10 in my book. There are cities that you visit once and it feels enough. And then there are cities that touch you in a special way, so you want to come back over and over again to discover more and to explore it deeper. And for me, Brussels is one of those cities. Might not be an obvious choice at first. The more time you spend here, the more you realize how much the city has to offer. 
From day to night, there are so many things to enjoy, to experience, to discover and to see in Brussels. If you decide to travel to Belgium and give the city a chance, one thing I know for sure, it won't disappoint. Well, fabulous people, thank you so much for watching this Brussels travel guide. I truly hope that you found it useful and beneficial and somewhat entertaining. Now, before you go and start packing for Brussels, please remember to smack that like button. And if you're new to my channel and my vibe and the vibe of this channel resonates with you, I invite you to subscribe. And I truly hope to see you all in my next video.